You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And man, today we are going to have an amazing show like we always do. We have a special guest, Tracy Hill. She's a coach and man, she specializes in helping people. And she has an amazing website that we're going to be diving into is Conscious Evolution dot coach and man when it comes to self-care you know we all need that nowadays when it comes to getting through trauma when it comes to bad habits and lack of purpose we're just going to dive into all that but first and foremost i want to welcome to the show the conscious evolution coach tracy hill herself how are you doing this this day i am fantastic how are you I'm doing great, man. Thank you for uh, taking time being on the show today. First and foremost, kind of give us a backstory. I know you had some ties to uh, Chicago, uh, so shout out to Chicago. So kind of give the audience a little backstory of your life. So I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, but I moved into Chicago and was getting my master's degree in kinesiology at University of Illinois, Chicago. And during that time, I was running marathons, running a human performance lab, and I started to feel not so well. I was falling over out of nowhere. In the meantime, I got on the Chicago Fire Department and I'm starting my 23rd year next month. Um, but in that meantime, I continued to have these on and off episodes. And lo and behold, I got multiple, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. They told me I would be in a wheelchair the rest of my life if I did not take medicine. I had like three different doctors. And, you know, it's a little scary to hear, but I, I'm stubborn, luckily. And I chose to start with a medication because I, I had no idea what to do. I, I was very confused. Uh, nobody I knew, knew anybody else with MS. My whole family is like, what the heck is this thing even? In fact, I had to do my own research to figure out what, what am I dealing with? What is going on here? And so after about a year of this horrible daily injection, I just took myself off and I was deep diving into possible causes of MS. And, you know, once you go in that rabbit hole <laughs> and there's many and it goes deep and it almost seems like it never ends. At least I haven't found the bottom. <laughs> I don't know if you have. Uh, it, a lot of MS comes from essentially stress or the mono um, virus or environmental factors. So when I was 19, I went into the army and I eventually went overseas. And this is previous to my diagnosis, got nine shots, you know, within 30 seconds, the typical, you know, line up and here's all your shots and bam, 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 bam. But everyone that I went overseas with got some incurable disease, not necessarily MS, but some pretty weird stuff. And when I was 22, I was a dancer all the way through college. I had fractured my spine mm. and I had, I just had some kind of strange coincidences along the way. Um, I did have mono at 13. And so when I was seeing all of these possibilities, oh my gosh, all, all these rabbit hole possibilities for what can cause MS. I mean, there's no cure and they don't have, there's no diagnostic tool still to this day, I decided that I'm just going to figure it out. <laughs> so I took myself off the medication. I started with, I was already eating really well, but I had to adjust my eating for the specific inflammatory issue I was having. And of course I had the exercise part down because that was my job forever. And then just started deep diving into so many other avenues. And it eventually led to well, let's look at breathing. Let's look at, um, you know, how we're living on a daily basis. And then it got to emotions and the emotions of what causes disease. And of course, emotions over time can cause stress. And the underlying factor to so many things, of course, is stress. Stress can be good to a point until it's not good anymore. And so when I discovered that my emotions were possibly causing 
all of the issues I've had, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, oh my God, I found the answer, but now what? Hmm. And then I realized that um, I have a special gift of being able to tap into subconscious. Actually, everybody can do this. It's just very, very, very easy for me. And I do teach people how to do that. But I then went in and removed what are called trapped emotions in the heart wall. As we are born and go through our whole life, if we encounter some kind of experience that causes a negative emotion and we don't process it, it lies dormant in our body. It can attach to an organ, oftentimes the heart, and then we we become an ego-driven person as opposed to our true self. Our true self, when we are expressing that, it drives us into our purpose. But when we're ego-driven, we go away from our purpose. And so over years, um, I didn't tell anyone I could do this releasing. Um, then I started doing it on people close to me. And now, of course, I do that for other people. But it was the catapult into understanding that emotions really drive a lot of our reality, even though we don't see it. So it's that subtle energy that we don't see. You're doing a lot. That's amazing to hear that you are making time to do this, which is important for you, but also maintaining your day-to-day -day responsibilities. And on top of that, being a firefighter, that's not an easy task at all. No. And, you know, the tricky part has been for years that I go to work in this, I'm going to say it nicely. I mean it in the nicest way possible. I love my guys, but it's a masculine, a toxic masculine environment because there's so much ego involved in the firehouse, as you can imagine. Um, and, you know, I mean, just like the military. And as you can see, so I've been in very masculine roles and that masculine energy, I was not stepping into my feminine energy ever. And it really caused me to go away from my true self as opposed to toward my true self. And so there was a big struggle for years, 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 years for me to go into the firehouse and have to put my, my wall up essentially, and then leave the firehouse decompress. So I only get two days and then go do it again. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a battle. Now I can go into the firehouse, know what I'm coming into. And the guys know all the stuff I'm into for the most part. So it's a lot easier now. Um, I'm integrated. Some guys will actually come talk to me privately about certain things. So it's a lot easier now, but it's still, I still have to protect myself from those energies coming into my body. And now when you speak forward to everything that you're doing with with your your brand conscious uh, evolution you can go to website conscious evolution dot coach you right to the core you're you're helping people but when you are showing people these techniques what are the fundamental things that speed up the process and and help people the most oh good question i'll say everyone is different um i went through the dark night of the soul or shadow work all by myself. It wasn't even really a thing yet. No one had a name for it when I went through it. And so it took me a long time. And I think what's, what stemmed out of that was when I coach people, I don't want them to feel like they're alone because it's a very lonely feeling, um, shadow work and uncovering if you're, I'm sure your listeners have heard of it, but just in case shadow work is uncovering the hidden traumatic emotions that are really, um, creating the cycles in your life that you would like to stop, but you don't know how to stop, but it requires you facing some things that happened in your past to help release them and process them out. And so, you know, I, I love helping people tap into their intuition and really embodying who they are. I think so many of us walk around with this facade on. It's kind of like Facebook in real life, <laughs> like posting up these pictures of like, hey, oh, you know, I'm doing all these great things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but behind the scenes, it's like, you know, your home life not be, might not be great or you're, you hate your job or whatever it is. And so I, I encourage and, and, oh, I just love when people step into their intuition and embrace all of their quirks and their everyone is 
just amazing, truly. But if you're not taught that maybe, maybe you really like coloring with crayons on your day off and that's awesome. And you can create some art with crayons. Everyone has told you, well, that's childish. You're going to stop doing it or you're going to feel bad for doing it. So it's learning that your gifts, they may not be mainstream gifts, but they're still gifts and you just have to embrace that. And so helping people find their path, because if you think about like right now, most people are on like a mile wide path, right? They don't know which direction to go in. So what I help do is narrow down that path so that you can see clearly at least a little more clearly, where you're headed. And with that also comes releasing of diseases, which is another aspect that I absolutely love doing by understanding what symptoms you're having, what other signs and symptoms you're having. And then I can help you understand what emotions that you're dealing with at the root. And those are the shadow parts of ourselves. And when we can do that, release these shadows and start to carve our own path instead of going with everybody else, you will find that your purpose just poof. Oh my gosh, you know, like this is great. And you no longer have to make excuses or find um, some other hidden way of, of expressing yourself. You just express yourself because that's who you are. And so you know, just to kind of sum up your question is, you know, finding your path, helping to release any kind of illness or disease and bringing all that together so that you can express yourself safely and joyfully. You listen to I'm Focus Radio talking to our guest, Tracy Hill, and man, she's a conscious evolution coach. She also is an amazing uh, firefighter. Uh, and I want to say thank you for your services to be in the military. You mentioned a part in the show where I think it's important. A lot of people get quote unquote stuck or they become indecisive or like you said moments ago, kind of come up with these excuses to whatever the thing may be, right? What are some of the common reasons why people feel that they can't do something or they're indecisive? As a whole, like when people aren't following their gift, like let's say somebody follows their parents' footstep and they get into carpentry or they become an electrician because that's what their mom or dad did. And they do that because society has shaped us into believing that we have to conform to what our parents said. It's it's just, it's almost like brainwashing, sadly. I know that people aren't happy when I see excessive drinking alcohol, um, excessive TV watching, like excessive kind of like addictions, right? Because what we're doing is we're suppressing our true emotions. So I see this a lot, sadly, in the, in the male culture. You're taught that you have to be the breadwinner. You have to go out, you have to make money and, you know, do all these male things. And unfortunately, not, not every male is wired to have this masculine job or go out and be the breadwinner just as every female is not wired to be a mom or you know take on that motherly role and so what happens is when you're not encouraged from a young age to seek out that which you enjoy the most you end up kind of rebelling and either hating life so much because you followed what your parents wanted or you go so the extreme that you don't even recognize yourself anymore. And you end up finding something to soothe you. So then whether that's alcohol, shopping, gossiping, food, doesn't matter. And you can see that everywhere in society. People have something they're glamming onto because they're taught to follow society, be a good citizen, go out, work, and die. <laughs> That's pretty much it. But conforming to that also then creates stress on your body and these subtle energies and thus creates disease. So not only do we have a lot of anger and fear in society right now, but we have a huge rise in disease. So, you know, allowing yourself to be you 
really creates not not just your peace and sanity, but also affects those around you. So my goal as a coach is to help people see it's not selfish to do what you want and desire to do as long as, as it's for the good of humanity and doesn't hurt people. And so if you do what you want to do, you're not just helping you, you're helping all of those people around you because it's, it's like the butterfly effect, right? Butterfly flaps its wings. The other side of the world gets the effect eventually. So having your own sovereignty, your own taking your own power back and knowing what you desire is really for everybody, not just you. You're filling up your own cup. Therefore, you can give and give. You release the stress. You enhance all of the subtle energies around your body because you have know, all these layers of energy around our body. And now those layers of energy affect people because they come into your energy. And when you are happy or joyful and peaceful and have a sense of humor and can just, you know, flow with life, people, they feel that, they sense that, and then they want more of it. And they will go out and seek that too. But if we're always doing the same thing and getting the same results, that's insanity, right? So essentially, we're trained at a young age to conform to the standards, to the norm, to the mainstream. You find things to help time go by when we don't have that sense of purpose. We just, we just go with the flow. Let me just do this again. You know, it's, it's just another typical day and it's that routine. And, and if we're not careful, we can keep that routine for years and not really, you know, live our life to the fullest. And when I mean fullest, I don't typically mean like you become this wealthy, rich person. It's more like, you become this person like you were talking about. You have this cup that's full and now you can use that to inspire other people and help them light on fire, if you will, to to live life with more passion and purpose. You don't just do coaching with courses and all that. You also set up events for people and you have a retreat that you're going to be planning to, to put on later this year. Uh, if you can, share with the audience was to go with the retreat and how that all is involved with your community. Yes. Thanks. The retreat's in March. I'm super excited. It's called the Soulful self Discovery Retreat. Um, it's for women. It's going to be in Joshua Tree, March 23rd through 28th. And um, during that retreat, the whole idea is to bring in all of the senses because I don't believe, just like when you're in school, not everyone can sit and memorize. We all have our strong sense. So whether it's seeing, hearing, feeling, and that helps us learn more. So the idea for this retreat is to really understand who you are at the core. And we're going to be incorporating different modalities. So there's going to be movement. There's going to be sound healing. There's going to be um, the food and things that we consume are also going to be part of it, or there's going to be a hike. There's going to be journaling type of activities, uh, workbook activities, one-on-one -on -one session. And so we're going to embody and encompass a very well-rounded idea of this is what I've been doing, but this is where I want to be. And so I need to release these limiting beliefs because that's pretty much what we all have is limiting beliefs. And I'm going to embody this new belief that I want to encompass so that I can be on path with my true purpose. And, you know, these limiting beliefs, whether you think you have them or not, you, because our brain literally has so much power, but we don't access it because we don't believe that we have access to it. And so those are, that's another limiting belief. And so taking uh, these women through, and I do have a few spots open, but taking women through all of this tactile and sensory. Um, it's like a trip for all the senses so that something will stick with you and you'll go, oh my God, yes. So I expect there to be tears and laughter and all kinds of wonderful emotions emerging out of this. Um, but I'm super excited for it. And the first day is a new moon. So we'd be doing a new moon intention ceremony and 
and just vibing out the rest of the week. And speaking of vibing out, when it comes to these emotions, quote unquote, when you are working with your clients, how you tap into that space where you're trying to help them understand how important these new emotions can kind of separate them from old habits and old way of thinking. So I do um, kinesiology testing. I do what's called the sway test and I only do it with permission. Um, And as long as I have permission, I can find out anything this, you know, a person wants to know. Um, We can go through food allergies. We can go through what, you know, do I wear my blue shirt or red shirt today? I mean, anything and everything. And again, this is like some kind of gift I have that I could just do it immediately. It takes no effort on my behalf. Um, other than getting permission and doing the sway test, I don't know how I can do it. <laughs> it's just, it's just part of, you know, it's an energy exchange. And, uh, I've been very blessed to be able to do this for so many people. So, so many pe- people, people call me and like, Hey, can you, can you check this out for my friends? They're like, Hey, can you muscle test this for me? Sure. And when someone is, approaching you, what are some things or something they can do to prepare themselves before they reach out to you? Yeah, I have a free, um, like a program chat because, you know, it's about, it has to be a right fit. I'm not for everybody. Um, everybody has their, their way of learning and understanding and comprehending. And, you know, it's not just me, I, you know, I like to say I guide people, but I'm also learning from my clients, which is a beautiful thing. It should be, it should be an exchange because I shouldn't just be, you know, a, a teacher standing up and dictating, here's what you learn. It's got to be an exchange. And so I'd like to learn about the person first. We have an hour, about an hour talk um, where they're struggling, where they're stuck. And if, if for them and it feels good for me, then we talk from there, but, um, it's got to feel good for both of us because I want you to succeed and not regret (laughs) and same for me. And, you know, it's, it's a time exchange too. And so, you know, if it's not the right fit, it's not the right fit. Totally fine. You'll you'll find somebody or when the time is right, you can come back to me, but, um, it's only if it feels good. Once again, talking to our guest today, I'm focus radio, Tracy Hill. You can go to her website, conscious evolution dot coach. Where should they start as far as reading up on your pages? Is there a specific spot that you recommend people to uh, kind of read up on first? You can check out my Facebook because you'll you'll get a really good idea of where I'm coming from. I'm all about energy and frequency. That is like the main focus of how people can heal themselves because I, I want to give you the power to heal yourself. Um, but just checking out my story, because I think a lot of times my story just resonates with certain people because they're going through the same thing or have been through it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I, you know what? I, uh, I align with that. And that's kind of where a lot of my clients come from is my story. Before we let you go, what's the call to action you want our listeners to, to take? I would love to chat with you. So if you are interested in possibly joining my program, I would love it. I do one-on-one because everyone's unique and uh, yeah, just go on my uh, website. You can sign up for a free program chat and I would love to hear from you. I want to say thank you to you, Tracy Hill, for just not just sharing your story, but also kind of giving us an inside scoop, everything that we need to know about conscious evolution. So I want to say thank you for your time. It's been with us on Refocus Radio today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful.